So first question I have for you, what is personal genome research? Oh, personal genome research is essentially research into the genomes of any individual. Okay. And it could be done by outside researchers or it could be the, done by the owner um, or the possessor of that genome. So how can open source models benefit biology? Oh, I think, uh, and this is why I was very excited to see the health tech track here at OSCon, um, is that I think it's very important for the OS community to take a leadership role in health models, not only on the electronic medical record side, but generally, uh, conceptually, on community-based open source research models, where uh, users can contribute their data into, say, million-member um, biobanks, and uh, this, is, this is going to be a much quicker path to us getting the data um, that we need to really work on preventive medicine. Now, do you think that sequencing, the cost of that will drop to the point where a lot more people can participate in it? Mm -hmm. And sure. when will that happen? Oh, definitely. Well, uh, whole human, oh, so the 23andMe cost right now is $400. Mm -hmm. um, and whole human genome sequencing two years ago was $350,000 for the retail customer. And then it dropped to $100,000. Then this year it dropped to $20,000. And for institutional customers, the, co the materials costs are $1,500. So it's oh, moving. Wow. Um, DNA sequencing costs are moving at an improvement rate of 10x per year compared with traditional Moore's Law improvements of 1.5x per year. So it's widely thought that the whole human genome sequence will essentially be free in the next few years. No kidding. So if that happens and when it happens, mm -hmm. that's going to be a lot of data that's out there. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do with that data? What yes. Is that when <laughs> things really start to click in? Uh, yes, I think it's a big challenge. Uh, Juan Enriquez, for example, um, noticed that in 2009, all of human created content till that point comprised one zettabyte of data. Mm -hmm. But that that same level will be routine for us to be creating, particularly in medical data, in the next few years. Mm -hmm. So we'll start to have a billion data points on every person and so on. So this is why it's very important to involve the whole computing community, particularly open source, in terms of developing models for storing that data, for the algorithms sorting out the signal to noise, making mm -hmm. the data useful, et cetera, as well as security permissioning uh, concerns. So what do you, you know, I'm not going to hold you to this, obviously, but mm -hmm. what, what type of things will happen mm -hmm. when we have access to that amount of data? Mm -hmm. I mean, what types of conclusions can we reach across the medical mm -hmm. professions, across uh, individuals? Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, the key challenge is, that's in front of all of us is preventive medicine. Mm. So I don't want to show up in 20 years and be diagnosed with diabetes. I want to start working on whatever biomarkers I can now um, ahead of times in a preventive way. And so I envision these multiple data streams being integrated, the genomic data, the, um, the phenotypic biomark blood biomarker data, and so on, together with environmental data, family history, many different health data streams all being integrated in a common format and that this would be a predictive tool that we'll have in quantified self-tracking devices that we can just easily, as an app on your iPad there, mm -hmm. that you monitor your health on a daily basis for predictive outcomes. No, oh, interesting. Now, last question I have for you. Mm -hmm. I, I read a recent piece, I think it was in Wired, mm -hmm. that actually brought up the point that for a very long time, uh, the medical profession has been scared of offering too much information mm -hmm. to patients. And mm -hmm. there was a, a counter in that saying that's that's generally overblown. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that, especially as we're sort of on the precipice of all this data coming in? I think it's a really interesting point because a uh, medical profession is challenged in many ways as consumers can now start to take more action on their own. Um, and another, another key aspect was a reticence of, of physicians to provide any information on a topic that, where there was no actionable mm -hmm. um, possibility for the, for the patient. However, now patients can investigate their own genome and see their own susceptibilities for something like Alzheimer's, for which there is no clinical uh, uh, cure or treatment right now. And so I think uh, more and more this, this role of the physician is going to be completely redefined. There'll be new ecosystem members like a health advisor, mm. almost like a financial advisor, a mortgage broker, mm -hmm. somebody who's quite knowledgeable about the different kinds of services available and that um, the traditional physician's role is as a diagnostician and as an exception, uh, somebody who's good for the exception cases, but not the general course of health management is how I see that role evolving. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.